I've blown your mind with two-dimensional lists. They're just tables, though, so push that back in your... You, you get what I'm saying. Anyway, two-dimensional lists mean that we can create tables of data. But how does that work with loops, and how does that work with dynamic lists? You're in the right place to find out. So when you're making a dynamic list, we're asking for pieces of data and appending as we go. When we have a fixed amount of columns we need to fill, how do we go about doing that? Well, luckily for you, I've got it all set up in an amazing way. I know, it's like I've planned these or something. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, so once again, I'm building a program that's going to generate that list of shame of people, ages, and computing platform preferences. Let's see what I've done. Well, I've started by making my blank list at the top, just like we did before, exactly the same. No fancy double bracketing needed. Then I've got my while true loop, my infinite loop, where I'm asking for the name, the age, and their computing platform of choice. Notice they're separate variables at the moment. I'm gonna be using the idea of scope so I can reuse those. Then the magic happens. I'm going to create a row. The row is created with square brackets to indicate that that's going to be a list. And within the list are gonna be those three things that I just asked for, the name, the age, and the computing preference. Once I've got the row created, I'm going to append the entire row onto my list from the top. That means that those columns are maintained and I'm keeping the structure of the two-dimensional list really, really well. I'm then asking the user if they want to exit and I'm using some of the knowledge that we learned in the string slicing and manipulation section to make sure I only take the first letter in lowercase. If they say yes, I'll exit and print it out. Let's see how it works. So I'll start with me. And I'm going to say no to exiting here. So far, I've created one row with me in it. Let's add in somebody else. So I've added in my nan. My nan should be on a separate line now and added to the bottom as a new row. Let's exit and see what prints out. You'll see that it dumped it with the code but everything is there. We've got the double brackets. We've got the square brackets to indicate it's a list. We've got the square brackets to indicate we've got a row and we've got the three values in each one. Take a bit of time and build this for yourself. See if you can get it working. Let's go on to write a pretty print function because the loops work a little bit differently in this case. Instead of printing, I'm going to use my pretty printer and I'm gonna write my subroutine up here. Now, as usual, I'm going to start out by printing a blank line. I'm then going to use for row in my list and just start out by printing out the row to see what I get. After the loop, I'm also going to print another blank line at the end just so it works. So let's run that again. OK, so it looks half decent, but there's a bit of weirdness going on here. We do have the rows printed out, but the rows are just lists. So it's printing out all the symbols as well as the data. So that means what we need to access this is we need one loop to extract each row and another loop to extract each item from the columns. That means we're going in here. So the first for loop creates the variable row with each row being one of the rows from the list. Inside of that, we're creating another variable called item that being the value of each item in the column for that particular row. We can then print that out. I'm gonna change my end to make sure that all these don't appear on a different line. And I'm gonna replace it with the tab character, which means there'll be a little gap between it. Now I do need to come back in and put one of those blank prints after that for loop, because after that for loop will be at the end of a particular row. And we would like the next row to start on a different line. That's probably the nicest thing to do. Let's see what that looks like. Now you can see there that looks a bit nicer. Now the tabs haven't quite lined up perfectly but we can mess around with those settings. We could use F strings to center them properly. In fact, let's do that. So using what we learned about F strings a few lessons ago, I've said that I want 10 characters as the space and I want whatever is put in there in the center. So that means I should have 
three groups of 10 with whatever data in the center. You'll notice I changed my end character instead of being tab now to being a space, a vertical line, and another space, and that should make it look a bit more like a table. And there we go. That's looking much nicer because I'm able to use the power of that F string centering and the end command to make an output that looks quite pretty and actually looks more like a table. And that's representative of what we're doing. Okay, common mistakes. This is the number one common mistake in all of two dimensional lists. And it is this, it is trying to use remove. This becomes quite difficult because the way we've used remove before is we've said, find the thing in the list and get rid of it. The problem here is that I'm having to find an item in a list within a list. And what am I going to do if I find it? Am I gonna remove the entire row or am I gonna remove just the one item? You need to think about this very carefully when you're designing your software, because it might be the case that you wanna remove one item, but it would leave your columns in a different order. Remember, the amount of columns and the order they're in is hard-coded into the way in which we construct the list. Therefore, it could be quite problematic to do anything that involves those lists and removing individual columns. The best thing to do is to remove an entire record, an entire row. So I've restructured this program a little bit with the same pretty print subroutine, but I've changed around the way the while true loop works so that there's a menu. If I type in add, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. But if I type in remove, I'm going to offer them the ability to type in the name of the user and remove them from the table completely. I've also stuck pretty print at the end of that loop. So it happens at the end of every loop so we can see the changes. Let's see what's going on. If I add me, you'll see it's added there. If I try remove and I try and remove me. So I'm putting the spelling exactly the same here, same capitalization. There shouldn't be a problem, but it's still there. Why is it not working? What's what could possibly go wrong? The code looks good. Well, let's think about this. I'm saying to type in the name and if the name is in the list, the way that if works is it checks every row in the list to see if it's the same as the value of name. Every row in the list is another list. So none of them will be equal to a single string no matter how many we look at or where we go. What I actually have to do is extract each row first so I can look at the individual elements. The way we do that is quite straightforward. We're gonna use a for loop. And what we're gonna do is check to see if the name is within the row. Now, if it is within the row, we're gonna remove the actual row, not just the name, we're gonna remove the entire row. So have a little pause and have a little try that yourself because correcting this mistake and making sure you can remove things is difficult. We cannot remove an individual item from a list of lists. Therefore, we have to extract each row and inspect the entire row as we did before. If the row then contains that element, we can remove the entire row just as we've done here. Let's see that work. We'll add to start with me, and now we'll try and remove. So this time it should go through every row, try and find any row that contains David, and if it does, delete the entire thing. And it worked. Once again, I've broken some code. It seems like I'm doing this on purpose now after what, 44 different lessons where it's happened. I do apologize. Try and fix it for me. I'll be eternally grateful. Well, in a theoretical way, in a, well, not eternally, maybe for a fraction of a nanosecond. Your challenge today is a little bit more exciting you are going to randomly generate a bingo card, as we've seen before. So you can take your code from last lesson if you'd like. But this time, you're also going to ask the user repeatedly within a loop what number comes up next. You're gonna use your knowledge to look to see if that number exists in the bingo card, and if it does, turn it into an X symbol. If the bingo card is all Xs, then the user has one. You're building then a really simple bingo game from the parts you've already got. 
Once again, do share it with us in the community by clicking publish and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code and possibly the hashtag David's Nan loves this code and also the hashtag David's Nan is going to win at bingo to share your code with us. Tomorrow is your project and we're going to use everything we've learned about 2D lists to really build something meaningful. Thank <music> you.